Hello fourth graders. So here I have my invisible city and I'm ready for water, the water coloring step. I have all of my pencil sketching outlined in black. Actually, I have a little bit more on this side, but I wanted to demonstrate for you right now. So I'm going to go back and outline that part and I'll be painting over here just for demonstration's sake. And I have my foreground with the largest items in front, my middle ground, and my background with a lot of detail. You can see who lives in my city. You can see how they get around. You can see what kind of entertainment they have in my city. So I'm ready for watercoloring. Today I'm going to show you three different water and coloring techniques. I have some different size brushes here, a cup of water, and my watercolor palette. You'll probably be using a watercolor palette with um, ready watercolors, um, so they're kind of like in little little oval palettes like this. I have some watercolors um, that look a little bit different, but they work the same. So. The first technique I want to show you is called wet on wet, wet on wet. And wet on wet is great for large areas such as sky or um, mountains or any kind of natural landscape that's a large area. So I'm going to take actually just some plain water, no watercolor yet, and I'm going to apply that water to the area that I want to put watercolor. So right now it's just going to look like wet paper. Let me get that pretty wet. Okay. Then I'm going to take my color and I'm going to drop it in. That's what I call this step. So I drop in my color. Um, it's going to be kind of like sunset in my city. So I'm going to be dropping in a few different colors to give that illusion of the sun setting. Okay. And then what you'll notice is that wherever there's water, the color starts to spread. I might need to coax the colors around, so that means kind of like add a little extra water if the color isn't moving on its own. Depends what kind of paper you have, so sometimes they don't slide as well. Okay. And I can kind of lift up the paper and like give it one of these, slide it down, slide it over, and the color kind of moves with the water, it spreads with the water. So that can be a really beautiful way to get a um, large area where you want blended color. I personally, I really love the wet on wet on wet technique. I just think there's like so much variety that can happen with it and the, I love how the colors just blend right in front of you as you do it. All right, so that's the wet on wet technique. The second technique is really great for texture. So let's say I wanted to create texture again in like a uh, maybe some type of natural landscape. So if I wanted to create texture of the rocks in, in a rocky area or water texture or um, texture, for example, in this um, hill right here, I'm going to do the dabbing technique. The dabbing technique uses very minimal water, so sometimes I kind of squeeze the, the water out of my brush a little bit. I get the color that I want. Okay, minimal water. And then I do pressing. It's almost like printmaking. And this is the only time that I really use my brush in this way, because usually we learn not to push on the brush like that. But for this, I actually want to basically dab it on like a sponge creates a great texture with which you can layer colors on. 
which makes a really cool effect for places that you want to appear like they have a texture, those natural areas especially. So there we are. Remember, very minimal water for this technique because you want to see the brush marks. And I'm layering. You'll notice each time I'm kind of using a slightly different color. This is a grassy hill, so I'm using mostly yellow, greens, and blues. If you look at grass in real life or even in a photo, you will notice that grass is not just one color. It has a lot of shades and tints and tones of green and sometimes even blues and yellows and sometimes even browns. <laughs> so. so there you have the second technique, which is great for texture, the dabbing technique. The final technique we're all familiar with, it's just your standard get your watercolor brush wet. Um, take your color of choice and simply paint it on wet brush, watercolor on the brush, and then I'm just going to lay it in. I'm going to do the handle of this paintbrush character here. Really being careful to go in the lines. I actually kind of think I want to go down a size in my brush here because get into the smaller details now. That's why I really like to outline too, to just keep that definition in my detail. If you ever want to lighten up an area, you can take a dry brush or a little bit of water on a brush. You can pull some of that color off. Say I want like a little sunspot right there. That's kind of cool. You can do that. So those are your three watercolor techniques. Your whole painting is going to get watercolored. Take your time. Um, try the three different techniques if you can. If you have a spot to try them on your page, that, that would be a good fit for that technique. It's not necessary that you try every technique, but what I'm looking for is that you're using the technique that is appropriate for the different areas of your painting. All right, fourth graders, have fun, and I can't wait to see your finished Invisible Cities.